How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week nine. We're sitting at an unfortunate six and two. Uh, don't want to talk about the loss. It was a bad one. It was a stupid one. And hopefully we don't have another this week. Uh, six and one Miami on the road. A plus team across the board. Statistically, they're doing pretty solid. They're favored to win. Let's see, who have they played? Uh, beat Toledo. Okay, struggled against FAU. That's good news for us. But then slaughtered Boston College. Did a good job against Duke. Uh, beat a kind of struggling UNC in a close one. Lost to the only ranked team on their uh, schedule here against Florida State. And that wasn't very close. And then beat North Texas. So who knows? Maybe they aren't playing up to their potential this year. So uh, maybe we have a chance. How about ESPN? Top 25 polls. We know we're not ranked. We're barely receiving votes in the media poll. Uh, and the coaches poll notoriously does not like us. Are there ranked matchups? Auburn and Vanderbilt will play. Arizona State and USC will play. Uh, Notre Dame and Clemson. But that's about it. So we need upsets this week if we want to see a lot of movement in the top 25. Here's a quick look at our Heisman watch. We got Kendall Milton from Georgia at the top. Chris Street from Cal. Darwin Barlow from TCU. Dewan Mathis from Georgia, so the quarterback and the running back for the Bulldogs, and Cameron Davis from Washington. So obviously a lot of running backs because it's NCAA 14. Uh, let's take a look at our conference standings here. We're pretty far through the season, more than halfway through at this point. What are our races shaping up to, to look like right now? Notre Dame, clear control of the lead in the ACC Atlantic, uh, but still pretty contentious race there. A lot could change. In the Coastal, we are four and two. We need to beat Miami here, and we need Virginia to lose. Virginia's 3-3, three and three, but 2-1 and one in conference and second in the division, so our loss to them will hurt, but I'm hoping, I'm kind of expecting them to get another loss, so if we can win out, we should still be making the conference championship game, so we're safe there in the American. It's USF, uh, Cincinnati, and Temple, oh, and Memphis, all undefeated, so a big fight for that conference. The Big 12 right now is between Texas and Baylor. A Baylor team, of course, that we have beaten, but doesn't matter for them right now because it's out of conference. How about the Big Ten in the East? Penn State has the lead. Michigan, Rutgers, Michigan State, Ohio State, and Indiana all sitting at that two-loss mark. Maryland might be out of the running already, so a shame for them. And then Purdue, interestingly enough, in the Big Ten West, leading the way by a pretty clear margin right now. Um, doesn't... I mean, if they win out, they win out, so... The rest of the teams in the conference are going to hope to beat the Boilermakers. Conference USA is North Texas in the lead. Uh, both divisions, you know, pretty close, but like nothing too crazy. No, no runaways. BYU and Army in the Independence, both 500 on the season right now. But they're not really fighting for anything other than just their regular season uh, record. In the MAC East, we've got Bowling Green undefeated, followed up by Ohio. Bobcats will hope for the best there. In the West, it's Ball State tied with Central Michigan at 3-0 each, so they'll have to play each other to see who takes the lead of that division eventually. The Mountain West Mountain division is Air Force, Colorado State, and Boise State all undefeated. Wyoming only one loss. Utah State only one loss. I got to imagine that means that the West of division has a lot of losses, and it does. So we've got an 0-4 uh, Fresno State in conference and an 0-2 Hawaii. Uh, but San Jose State leading the way there. How about the Pac-12, the North Division, Cal and Oregon leading the way there. Washington with a loss, but their uh, regular season still 6-1. and one. So uh, the unranked team in the division is leading it, followed by the number six and the number two. In the South, you've got Utah 2-2, two and two, USC 3-3. Three and three, So the Pac-12 South kind of having a rough go of it so far. The SEC East, we've got Georgia far and away the best team in the conference. They're 99 overall. They should not have too many problems. Uh, they are not the only 99 overall team in their division. Florida's there, but they're struggling 4-4 four and four with a 2-4 and four conference record. In the SEC West, it's Bama jumping up. They've kind of struggled recently. They are 5-2, and 3-1 and one in conference, but they've got the one win lead over the rest of the division, so they'll hope to hang on to that. The Sun Belt is the Rage and Cajuns in Georgia State uh, fighting for the top of that, both undefeated in conference, although Rage and Cajuns only one conference game so far. 
and that's going to be it for uh, conference standing. So a lot of close races still. Nothing uh, set in stone yet, it doesn't look like. And this is a, almost a must win for us if we want to make it back to the conference championship game here against a 6-1 and one Miami. We do have some recruiting to do. Did anybody lock us out or commit somewhere else? I feel like we had one. No. So the board stays the way it is. Um, but we're going to have to schedule a couple visits and try to move a couple of points around as needed. Aaron Hill is going to go to the North Carolina game, the only game available to him. And Matt Johnson will also go to it because it's our only home game left. It must be. So that's uh, a lot of away games coming up. We do have our first bye uh coming up soon here which is nice um how are we doing in terms of the players that we really want biggest lead wise we should be close to getting some guys to commit but uh you know it's never gonna be too easy trying to get close to kevin west there's nice uh michael brigham we're in the lead but we don't have points to give him to hold off mississippi state so we'll just have to hope that he Decides to lock it up. Brockhampton, 90% locked. Maybe enough to cut these guys out with their visits upcoming. We want him to commit as soon as possible. And yeah, it just kind of seems like that's going to be the case with a lot of these uh, big battles for a lot of players. Nothing too crazy going in our favor. Nothing too crazy hurting us. How about like Mike Shelby? This is tough. Week 12 can't come soon enough because we do not want to get locked out by this corner. He's, uh, he's a monster of a player. And we're losing a ton of points a week towards Texas A&M. So we need to get him to the offseason. But other than that, uh, I'm feeling pretty confident. Georgia uh, Southern still coming for Joe Rogers, our kicker, which is a shame. But we should be able to mitigate a lot of that with our visit the week after theirs. So not too worried there. And all in all, I think that we're looking pretty fine uh, gaining there against Northwestern. So, um, yeah, I might uh, go through and change a couple of things up, but I'm not too worried about the state. Uh, maybe with Kyle Edwards, we need to get our visit because we're at risk of being locked out, but I don't think we drop below that 1700 this next week. So, uh, not much to change. Uh, let's get into the game. So we're on the road, which means, uh, we have to wear an away uniform and we're going to keep it pretty simple. I think, um, I don't really like a whole lot of changes on our away. I think that the, the standard or the all white looks the best, but we're just going to go with a black helmet this time instead of the white and the Hurricanes. A lot of options for these guys. I like the Miami Knights. We might run with it, uh, but I like the 2018 uh, parlay quite a bit. Um, maybe you pronounce it parley. I'm not sure. Uh, I think that's what we're going to go with. They have a lot of cool stuff, but I really like the, the uh, kind of... Uh, Miami Dolphin look? Maybe that's the intention behind this, but the, the uh, kind of teal on that is pretty cool. So let's just go ahead and say that we'll play them, and then that way we can pretend that we're beating an NFL team or losing to, <laughs> depending on the way this game goes. 97 overall only for Miami, so that's good news for us. Not the full 99. Maybe we won't get as beat up and, and battered by these guys, but let's get into this one and see how it goes. Offensively, they are pretty solid. I would consider that a top 25 offense, no problem. And easily a top 25 defense, probably top 15. Um, they don't give up a lot of points. They score a lot of points. They don't give up a lot of yards. We're in trouble. Uh, our defense has to play well this game. Top players in the mid-90s overall range, so that's dangerous. They have injuries, though. Are they big? A foot fracture and a broken elbow for an outside linebacker and a right guard is great news for us. Just because it's two fewer players that we have to worry about. Um, it's not going to be an easy one though. We got to make sure that uh, Grayson and the rest of the team is on it today. So we are here in Miami at the Hard Rock Stadium. A big game in front of us. Tails never fails. Except for today. Something about these Miami Knights. Uh, they're going to elect to kick it off. No wind on the day, but we are starting with the ball. And let's see if we can kick this one off with a bang. Marquise Jackson with a very returnable kick. If the blocking's good, you never know. We could see him take it the distance. The blocking is pretty solid, but not enough for it to spring free. Steal decent field position for Grayson and the rest of the offense on this opening drive. Turnovers absolutely ended our chances of winning last game, so we want to hold on to the ball as much as possible on this one. And we're going to open it up with just a simple run to CJ for a... Pretty simple three-yard pickup. 
Second and seven. I want to run the dive, but it looks like they want to bring some pressure. So we're going to actually flip this one the other way away from that linebacker and run it up the middle. And CJ's got a lot of room to work with. He breaks a tackle and gets 11 yards on the carry, giving us our uh, first first down of the game. No reason to go away from the run yet, except for the fact that it looks a little bit dangerous. So uh, we're going to flip this. I'm worried about the pressure they're bringing. I got to hope that the blocking holds up on this one. And CJ should have gone on the counter, took it up the middle because it seemed a little bit more safe, and we did get two yards out of it. So we'll put Grayson into the pocket on the second eight. They want to bring pressure. Question is, can we get this pass off before the pressure gets to us? A's open. It's Logan Malden. Of course, he's got it. He's broken the tackle, and he's still on his feet across the 35-yard line. That's a good first completion of the game. So we'll just continue to march down the field on this drive. A handoff on this one. See CJ cutting it up field, getting north as soon as possible, and another three-yard pickup. And we're going to just continue to run the ball here. Second and seven, again up the middle. The blocking seems decent for Braden Bennett as he's come in for his first carry. And he's got seven yards for us and another first down. Marquise Jackson coming in motion for a play action screen, or, or sweep, sorry. And this is a tough throw. B's open. Maybe Bedgood can't get to it. That was not open, and it was not a good throw. Uh, thankfully, it was just deflected. Everything about that play didn't work how I wanted it to, so we'll go back to the ground on second down and hope that the blocking holds up for Beasley and does well enough. Third and six now after the four-yard carry. This is kind of a tough spot. Third and six, four down territory. We're going to try the read option. Hopefully, Grayson can keep it, gets some space, picks up a block, and Grayson diving into the corner of the end zone. 18-yard run for the touchdown to take the lead on our opening drive. And it's... Uh, Kudos to the offensive line for allowing that one to happen. Oh my goodness, Baylor upsets number four, Oklahoma State. So that is double good news for us as a uh, top five team is lost, which is always nice, but it, they lost to a team that we beat, which makes our win over them look that much better. So helping our strength of schedule, Jeremiah Payton with a decent return there. I am very worried for what the defense has in store for us today. They're going to step back to throw, and right away, Diggs gets burned on that little corner route, and Restrepo gets 25 yards. And on this first down, they are going to... Looks like it handed off. Oh, I missed with the safety blitz. So they're going to get an easy six yards on that one. How about this second and four? Looks like they want to throw it, or go to the ground again. I'm all over the place. We got the stop, though. And on third and three, we're bringing the safety blitz again. Another handoff. Diggs was there to slow him down. And Don Chaney only got a yard, so fourth and one, and maybe a hold for the defense. But it's fourth and one, and Miami's going to go for it. Not an empty backfield. We're bringing the safety blitz again because I think they run the ball here. Got to jump the snap properly. Quarterback steps back to pass. He's throwing off his back foot. Shelton gets the tackle, but it's just short, or just too far, I guess, for the offense. So Miami is able to convert that one just barely. And now they'll hand it off. And Kale Mackey with a great tackle just past the line of scrimmage. Again, blitzing second and eight, trying to bring Diggs. Diggs gets in there, hits Cheney Jr., but he somehow broke free and got two yards there. So a little bit disappointing on that play. Doesn't work quite in our favor. They'll most likely pass on this third and six. And over the middle of the field, they have Peyton. The return man holds on to that one. Another first down for Miami. Let's try to bring another blitz on this one. It's going to be an option out towards the edge. The pitch is beautiful. The downfield blocking is impeccable from their wide receivers. And it's another first down. This is one heck of a drive from Miami really executing. This time it's another uh, run up the middle. And it's seven more yards inside the 10. So from the seven yard line, second and three, we're going to bring the safety blitz again. This one a run out towards the edge. It should be stopped. Bomar with the tackle finally for a loss of a yard and another third down. And we're going to get a little bit risky with this one. Third and four, the corner blitz. If they run it up the middle, we are in big trouble. But if it's a pass, maybe we have the chance. And that pass is out of the back of the end zone. Couldn't find his man who was wide open in time. So fourth and four, they're either going to have to go for it or they settle for the field goal. So the defense bending but not breaking will hold Miami to just three points on their opening drive, which is fantastic news. Uh, we've got a chance to extend our lead as we come back out on offense. And another upset 
uh, up, upset, goodness, Boston College upsets NC State. And the number 13 continues to find ways to hurt us after we lost to him. Speaking is difficult, you know. <laughs> Marquise Jackson back to return. We are going to bring this one out. I don't like it in the middle of the field, but if things work well for us, then they do. We can get great field position. Marquise just running down the field gets us to about the 45-yard line. So the running game worked really well the first time out. We're going to try to continue to lean on that. CJ with a good little cut back to get three yards on first down. And we'll try to get this final play off. A little counter with the fake fly. And Beasley gets another three yards. So we will go into the second quarter with the lead. With the ball. Hoping to uh, score another touchdown on this drive. It's going to be a similar play to the last one. The fake jet counter option now on third and four. Handing it off to Brain Bennett who just trucked over a man and got nine yards. He's having a good game on the limited carries he's getting so far. Let's try to throw it here. Five wide. Empty backfield for Grayson. He's got an easy little check down to Dion Fountain over the middle. And it turns into 12 yards. So good decision there. Our best chance of winning this game is if we don't have to pass all that much. A lot of pressure immediately up the middle. Grayson just barely got it out. Had guys open, but just unable to get it to him. And that was a good blitz from Miami. So a good stop. Puts me in a weird spot. And we're going to try the motion triple option here. Maybe a pitch to Marquise Jackson. No, the quarterback, uh, I guess I should have handed that one off. That was a weird read for me. Lost a yard, it's third and 11. Fair play to the defense on that one. They burned me bad and over the middle. I thought Mobley was going to be in front of the safety, but he can't do it. So fourth and 11, I think we're kicking a field goal. It's a long attempt. I don't know if we can get it that far. It's 46 yards, but we'll give it the chance. I didn't quite get all of it. And it's short. I think full power, it's good, but that's, uh, that's a bad miss on my end. Defense needs to give us another shot here. Hopefully they have an easy time of it is. Let me will step back to pass on first down, and they throw the check down to the uh, late release route for Larry Hodges. Good decision there for him. It doesn't work out in my favor, but what do I know? Guys open. Shelton almost gets the pick. Oh, we need to capitalize on those. On second and 10, I'm going to expect the run. We're trying to press up. Can we get there? Shelton just kind of got bottled up. Charles Steele missed the tackle, and so they get 12 yards out of the play. Well, the safety blitz has been working pretty well for us so far this game. So we're going to try to bring it again. Pressure getting to the quarterback. He gets hit as he's releasing it. So it's incomplete in second and 10. Dialing up the pressure has really worked wonders so far for us in this game. As second and 10, they will step back to pass once more. And there's a man wide open on the little corner route for 16 more yards. That one is entirely on me. Just uh, didn't see him release out that way. Was worried about over the middle and hopefully we don't get burns. No, look at this impeccable blocking again. We're lucky that's not a touchdown. Don Chaney Jr. just kind of running around like a madman back there. Well, how about this first down? Another handoff as we were bringing pressure with the linebackers. We will hold them. Still a chance to keep them to a field goal on this drive. I will absolutely be expecting the pass on second and 12. They do step back over the middle. There is a man. We cover him off, and the quarterback has to get rid of that one. So a great job from the defense again, and we've got him in a third and long. The big question here is, can we cover this properly? Third and 12. Just have to keep them shy of the line to gain. I got, uh, oh, okay. Well, we got the deflection. They kind of went with a weird screen. It didn't work. Fourth and 12, and the defense holds again. It's a shame that we're having to uh, hold them to field goals, but it's better than giving up touchdowns regardless. This kick is easily good through the uprights. And now we are just reduced to a one-point lead. Four minutes left in the first half. We've had decent returns so far today. We'll hope that Marquise can give us another. Again, returnable ball. Just barely in the end zone. And the blocking, oh my gosh. It was not great. Marquise gets popped and fumbles the ball. And Miami recovers it inside the red zone. There are not a lot of plays that could have ended up worse than that one. As they are already in field goal range. Quarterback throwing that one away, thankfully. Tyler Van Dyke only 5 of 11 through the air, but defense needs to hold again. Really don't like the fact that we're having to uh, put the defense in these situations, as this is a mid-screen. 
that doesn't work. It's actually a loss of a yard, and it's third and 11. So our uh, coverage has been pretty solid. Third and 11 just got to guard the five-yard line here as I expect them to step back to pass. It could be a screen, and it is. The slip screen not going to go anywhere as we'll drop them for another loss, but Miami getting essentially a free three points on the drive. It's a real shame. The defense has given us, honestly, a very solid game against a 97 overall offense. Uh, there's just not much that we can do to slow these guys down as they kick their third field goal of the game and take a two-point lead. So hopefully Marquise can hold on to the ball on this kick return. I am going to continue to trust him. I am going to continue to bring it out. We just need things to go our way. The blocking okay there. Marquise trying to make up for it. Gets us across the 50, across the 45-yard line before finally being tackled out of bounds on a 55-yard return. So we'll uh, step back to pass on this first and 10, hoping that people were open. Immediately, there's Bedgood for a, a quick ooh, catch. A couple of extra yards. Looked like he was going to break the tackle, but just got to stumble forward for 16 at the end there. Going to continue to pass on this drive. The passing game has been working pretty well. Somebody has to be open. It might be B. Bedgood. No, the pass was uh, ways over his head, and the safeties were with him anyways. So that one just kind of ends up being a little bit of a waste of a down as we will uh, look to run this. We're going to bring it, DJ Johnson over to the strong side now and second and 10, handing the ball off the blocking. Looks okay, CJ Beasley. Not the quickest back, but able to pick up eight yards on that one to the corner. Third and two will keep it on the ground as there's almost under two minutes to go. CJ can't quite get it. In fact, they didn't even say he got a full yard. It's fourth and two and we are definitely going to go for this. This is a dangerous play, but we're going to go for it. Outside the pocket, maybe. Grayson getting chased down. Finally eludes the uh, defender and gets the first down sliding across the line. That D end just qu didn't quite get picked up on the block as uh, we will run with a minute and a half to go. We have all our timeouts, but at this point, got to think about how much time we'll give Miami when they get the ball back. On second and eight, we're going to come out in the Wildcat and run the read option with the two running backs. Beasley's going to keep it. The blocking is there. Uh, defense just kind of ignored that he was there. Turned around to get him before picking up the first down, though. They are pretty stacked over the line here as we're going to look potentially to pass. No, we're audibling this. But we're going to try to hand it off. I hope it's actually a run to the left. 28 seconds left. Beasley's got it, and he's got the fourth and inches. Not quite in. I'm taking a time out here to think about this. Ooh, they're going to take a look at the spot. Maybe they give us the first down. Shame that we had to spend a time out for it, but if it makes it so we don't have to worry about a turnover on downs, I'm fine with it. Honestly, I thought he was across, but we'll see what the refs say. This angle should tell us for sure. Knee... I don't know where they say the knee's down. <laughs> the ball definitely crosses, but at what point? Wow. You don't see that often. They reverse the call, and we will get the first and goal. So now, with 26 seconds, we're going to give it to J.J. Barr. Fullback dive, and he's in. So we take the lead back. Um, we're up. I might go for two here. Can I get this right? We're going to go for two here. Conversion makes it a six-point lead, so we're going to be looking, hopefully, to convert. A's open. Logan Malden's got it. Easy little slant right all the way across the end zone. And a good throw, thankfully, from Grayson. So 15 to 9 with 24 seconds left. So defense has done a solid job so far this first half. Can they do it again here? Not a lot of time. Thankfully, the time will be burning a little bit off the clock as they will return this, and a big hit drops Peyton inside the 25. So we're going to come out in the dime package here, 21 seconds. If they run the ball, I'm a little bit worried, and they do run the ball, but a good tackle from Shelton. We'll probably just see this clock run into the half. And there it is. The clock winds down. Miami content, I guess, trailing by six as we head into the locker rooms. Uh... Defense has played very well, holding them on three drives to three field goals, uh, especially on that last drive where they had the shortened field. Offense has played okay. We missed a short field goal, or a long field goal short, uh, and we had the turnover on special teams. But other than that, a pretty solid game from both sides. We just happened to have the upper hand, but they get the ball to start the third quarter. 
Hoping for a decent kick from Frederick here. Will be just there on the goal line being fielded by Peyton again. Can we get a decent stop? Sadipu pulling him down. I thought he was going to bounce off, but good tackle keeps him inside the 20. Going to be very curious to see what adjustments Miami has made over the half. In terms of offensive play calling, there's a wide open out route. I saw that one coming from a mile away, but Diggs didn't, and he gets beat by Restrepo for 18 yards. One thing I am noticing is that we're holding uh, the the routes for quite a while before the quarterback throws them. So when we blitz like this, it's going to work very well because he doesn't have the, the quick guys open. And that's a great sack for a loss of seven. So if we can get to the quarterback early on those blitzes, uh, he'll either throw it away or take the sack, which is good news. And ooh, otherwise, he, he's going to find a guy open. Decent job stopping the run for a third and long here. And we'll go with the uh, the zone blitz on this third down. Stepping back to pass over the middle. I saw it too late, and it's Restrepo again. He breaks the tackle, but stumbles down. There is a flag down on the play, and part of me thinks this could be a clipping. This could be coming back. We're going to get another chance, I think. It's third and 14, so thankfully another chance to stop them on third down. We got bailed out there. Miami is only one of five on their third down conversion so far today as they will step back to throw this one and Stokes well got beat but not by enough for the first down so fourth and six I expect to see them punt this ball away that's gonna send Marquise Jackson back to return he's always dangerous so they should be a little bit worried about this one no fake the kick is off it's a decent one but we will have a chance for a return Marquise spins to make a man miss, gets 14 yards, and offense gets a uh, pretty decent field position to come back out to start this third quarter. And on their opening drive of the second half, we're going to continue to run the ball. I would like to be able to pass, but I think that they have some very solid secondary players that I just don't know if it's worth testing them. So we continue to run the ball a decent amount. Second and five, we're going to try the counter. Braden Bennett has space. Maybe could have uh, ran a better route there to pick up the first down, but it's third and short. Uh, here on third and two, we're going to go to the air. Looking for the running back who might be open. Bennett comes down with it through the contact. That is a tough catch for our running back to make, but did a great job holding on to it. We'll go with the play action pass to start this set of downs. We'll see how is it going to work for us. Not a whole lot of time, but a man open. Bedgood, oh my gosh, took a shot in the process on that one, but picked it up and held on for the first down. Apparently, uh, either I made a formation sub or something weird, but Braden Bennett's in at quarterback. Uh, Grayson's not injured, so I don't know what the deal is, which means we're just going to scramble with the running back and, oh man, dive forward riskily, but we pick up 14 yards. Uh, I don't know what the deal was with that. So Grayson just getting a chance to breathe for a play. And now we'll give it to Marquise Jackson on the sweep. These plays have worked well for us in the past. And this one, so close. If that guy gets picked up on the block, it's a touchdown. Still nine yards on the play. Let's try the dive on second and one. Handing the ball off to Beasley. He kind of got hit at the line, but found some space and picked up the first down as this drive just continues to march down the field. We'll go with the counter again here on first down. Decent amount of space for Brayton. The spin move keeps it on his feet, and he makes a man miss to find the end zone. Oh, wow. What a carry. 10 yards for the touchdown. It's going to be 22 to 9 late here in the third quarter. A game like this is why I just sometimes don't understand this game. How are we performing this well against a 97 overall Miami on the road, but we struggled to beat Virginia? Uh, I just will never quite understand sometimes. Going to try a little bit more nickel as we're getting late here, and I will expect them to pass the ball more um, in the later stages of the game as they maybe get desperate, but good four-yard pickup that time on the run up the middle. And we'll bring the blitz on second down. Again, another can handoff. Uh, again, great blocking downfield. Baker, thankfully, holding on to him. And we get him out of bounds. That was a good pickup on that second down. And I'm a little bit worried about a pass attempt on this one. But no, it's a handoff again. Looked like a counter. Durham Finch bringing him down. But not before he gets five yards. 
They are really moving down the field in this hurry up now. I want to bring pressure with Shelton. It is another handoff, and nobody's going to be able to get there in time, so they just continue to chug along here, picking up yards every play. Let's try the big blitz on this first in 10. I hope that we can get there. It looks like a handoff. Again, up the middle, little counter maybe. Sadipu gets the tackle, but <laughs> they, we might need to take a timeout to slow him down. How about the safety blitz on first and 10? Over the middle, they get the pass. Redding maybe with a one-handed catch. Couldn't quite tell, but even that, six yards as the pressure was coming. They finally went away from the hurry up for a play. Maybe they needed to make some subs of their own. We're going to bring pressure. There's a man open. He catches it, but only gets a yard before he steps out of bounds. So we do have him in a third down. And the safety blitz has worked really well so far on these downs. So we're going to bring it again. I think this could be a run. They're bringing a man in motion, which makes me a little bit worried. There's the pressure, the run up the middle. We hit him and then just missed. And he's got an open path to the end zone. So close to holding them. But instead, Miami finds the end zone for the first time. 32 seconds left in the third. We'll see if they go for two here or not. Just an extra point, thankfully. You know, one of these days we'll block one. It's not today, though. Offense, I think they need to kill a little bit of clock on this drive. So it'll be a, another kick return for Marquise, who's had an okay day. This one deep into the end zone. Still, we're going to return it. The blocking is kind of suspect at first. Uh, we didn't really make the most out of that one, but... Eh. Burned a couple seconds off the clock, I guess. And with uh, less than 30 seconds left in this third quarter, we're just going to run it once and let the clock burn out, get into the fourth with our lead, and hope that we can go down the field and score. So here at the end of the third quarter, feeling still pretty good. Defense has played pretty well. They had a rough time on that last drive, but almost got the stop still. Um... I mean, if the offense scores here, we'll feel pretty confident, but we just need to get out of this game as quick as possible. Of course, if we could just run the whole time, that would be fantastic, but we will probably have to pass. So just avoiding turnovers for the rest of this game is going to be key as CJ gets hit in the backfield and loses a yard. Gives us a tough third down to work with. And we're going to go back to a play that didn't work earlier. The motion wide receiver option. On third and four, if we make the right read, I'll feel confident. We get the pitch out to Marquise Jackson, and you better believe this man can move. He gets us 14 yards. If those guys miss the tackles, he was gone. So the drive is able to stay alive, which means that we can continue to run the ball and continue to chew the clock as much as possible. This is a nice counter for C.J. Beasley on first down to get eight more yards. 28 carries to nine passes is what we're standing at on the day, and that's why we're winning. Just able to avoid throwing the ball as much as possible, and that way when we do throw, we've been finding guys open. Bedgood gets a great uh, catch on the slant route. And I know this isn't very uh, good for burning the clock, but we're gonna pass twice in a row. Running backs open, Braden Bennett. Ooh, the little step back made a man miss before he got crunched just at the line to gain. Second and one now. And we'll go ahead and hand this one off. Hoping to get inside the 25, but Braden kind of has to bounce it to the edge, but find some space and get six more yards. We are back in the Wildcat, using it quite a bit today as we go jet sweep to Braden Bennett. And the blocking is pretty, uh, pretty phenomenal, all things considered, for what I expect to see on those plays. And it works for six yards. Bennett a little bit slow to get up, though. He does manage to feel good enough, so he's in on the play, though. Second and four, going with another read option. He's getting the carry. He makes a little move, and he finds the end zone. 14 yards. No, they say first and goal. They say he was down. Wow. I am so surprised it's not a touchdown. I won't complain, though, because the clock will continue to burn here on our first and goal. We're going to run a fullback dive, give it to J.J. Barr, and see if he can get in. And no. Unable to get there, just back to the line of scrimmage. We're just going to continue tr to try and run it up the middle as now second and goal. We can really start burning the clock and this get this one close to two minutes left. A touchdown here would almost surely spell defeat for Miami. Again, back to the line of scrimmage. It's third and goal. This would be an all-time goal line stand for Miami if they get it. Giving it back to J.J. Barr. We will go for this on fourth down if we need to, but J.J. says, I got you. 
He finds the end zone. We extend the lead now. It's going to be 29 to 16. Less than two minutes to play in this game. So we're actually going to go for two here. Hoping for the best. Trying to find somebody open. Grayson, plenty of room. He can scramble. He had a man open, but why not run it in and risk yeah, or avoid any risks that we didn't need to take? So the two-point conversion is good, and it extends the lead by another point. 30 to 16 gives us a 14 point advantage so definitely worth it as uh miami's gonna be in desperation mode now down two touchdowns i'm gonna be expecting quite a bit of passing so we're gonna just run in the dime for a while and hope that that works as they'll step back to pass there's a guy open sadipo getting beat um okay restrepo he burned us last year he's doing a good job this year as well Shelton really on fire. The only player on the defense, really. Uh, one of our corners is as well, but they'll step back to pass. There's an out route. And it's caught all too easily for 13 yards. They're really not burning a whole lot of clock on this drive. So we're going to take a risk here. I'm expecting quite a bit of uh, passing, and I'm expecting a lot of danger on this, but the blitz has got to come. Something's got to give, and there's... Oh, wow. I hit it on the quarterback as he's releasing, and we just came so close to intercepting it. But once again, bringing the blitz has allowed us to, uh, you know, force this quarterback to throw it quick or take the sack, and it works well. And on third and three, I'm making a very risky decision with the safety blitz. Hoping to get guys in there quick. They're going to hand it off, and they're going to lose three yards. It's fourth and six. And the clock is going to be ticking unless they take a timeout. So a must-convert situation now for Miami. Otherwise, they lose the game. They're going to step back to pass. There's guys there. Oh, I just saw it with Killen. But I was uh, maybe a half step too slow. So they're just barely able to convert that play. And they take their first timeout. 57 seconds now to go. Over the middle. That's me getting burned. But we tackle them short of the line to gain. So they're going to have to take their second timeout. Certainly not an easy game for us defensively. But they're doing a good job at coping as pressure. Not able to find the quarterback. And he finds Xavier Restrepo for the fourth time today. Streaking down the field for an easy touchdown. It's going to be a seven-point game with 47 seconds left. Which means we need to recover this onside kick. Hoping that Miami doesn't get a good bounce. That didn't look like a good one. DJ Johnson has the ball. We're going to try to burn a little bit of clock here, running it to the side. <laughs> 44 seconds, one timeout for Miami. I think that's enough to get the win. So we will run the ball on first down and then most likely just knee it out the rest of the way after their final timeout. And that's going to be it. Enough to get it done. Man, where was this game last time? I don't think we have to run another play either. So we come out winning this game. And while the score seems pretty close, it didn't feel that close at the end of the day. 30 to 23 as the clock strikes triple zeros. That was a good win. Defense is the reason we got there. The offense had a solid game all around. They had a, the, the one drive where they settled for a long field goal that missed and special teams had a fumble. But beyond that, just a, a very solid game. Offensive line gave us great pushes the whole time to allow us to run it as much as we wanted in the game and uh Grayson not making too many mistakes was very useful how about that run diving for the end zone big touchdown there and uh, we come away uh, you know with another win after a tough loss last week and that's a good way to bounce back so we end the game looking pretty solid 188 rushing yards only had to pass for 89 we didn't give up a crazy amount we did lose the turnover battle because of that Marquise Jackson fumble but look at the time of possession, 20 minutes, 23 seconds. Just didn't give Miami a chance to do their thing. We held them to nine through the first half, and that was enough. How about the two uh, two-point conversions as well to make it uh, just that much more difficult for Miami? Looking solid. Our offensive player of the game is J.J. Barr with his two rushing touchdown. Mason Shelton is our defensive player of the game. The defense didn't have any spectacular plays. But they just played solidly the whole uh, the whole game. So congrats to the defense for doing a good job there. Seven and two. That should put us pretty much back on top of the division. I guess Virginia technically has the tiebreaker over us. I expect them to lose a game through the rest of the season, since they were you know already had three losses going into our matchup. Uh, we'll advance the week. Don't expect to be ranked, but 
We'll get ready for this road game as we uh, head to Minnesota late in the season. Recruiting wise, just a lot of battles. <laughs> uh, I hope that we can pick up a third of those players. They're all solid. They would all be tremendous for our team, but it's going to be difficult. We do get locked out by Danny Wilson. Of course, we get our XP not ranked, and we go on the road now in Week 10 against a 2-5 and five Minnesota. They're a B-plus team, so they'll be about 91 overall. Um, we're favored to win this. They're 1-4 in, in conference, minus 11 in turnover differential. Uh, you know, almost dead last in the country. Who have they beat? They beat... Uh, is that Miami? Is that supposed to be the Miami of Ohio? Two and six. And that was a close one, 17-7. And then they beat Iowa. A five and three Iowa, 38-31. So that's a big upset. Everything else, they've just been kind of beat down. Um, I I'm hoping for the best on this one. How about a look at ESPN? We know there was a couple of upsets where they're more than what we saw. Um, no losses. There are a bunch of ranked games so far. For next week, Oklahoma State lost to Baylor. They have to play Kansas this week, a chance to lose two in a row. Arizona State at number 12 lost to USC. NC State lost. Vanderbilt lost. Uh, Notre Dame, Louisiana, and Florida State all drop out, so I imagine those are losses. And look at that. We're right back up to 27th in the coaches poll. Are we ranked in the media poll? Not quite. What are we, 26th? No, now the media poll dislikes us and we're, what is that, 29th? So kind of all over the place in terms of where we're being ranked this season, but a win is a win and it looks pretty solid for us. And in their game last week, Virginia managed to beat uh, a pretty mediocre pit, 31-26. So the Cavaliers holding on now to the top of the Coastal Division. No tiebreakers necessary. They haven't played as many games as us, but... Uh, you know, if they keep winning, they're going to look pretty solid. We just, I, I got to imagine at some point they lose one, but I think they technically have to lose two. So we will definitely have our fingers crossed that that happens. Unfortunately, though, that's going to have to be it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Those two things help out the channel tremendously, and I appreciate it quite a bit when you guys do it. So thank you for that. And, you know, while you're down there, like and then subscribe and head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as uh, links to my Twitter and our community Discord and the college football revamped mod if you want that for yourself. But other than that, thanks again for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.